Welcome back to another episode of Writing with Mr. Ruck Dashel. Today is episode 10, although it's kind of like nine and a half, because if you remember yesterday we talked about setting, and today we're talking about what else can setting do for you. So if you haven't already, get them writing journals out writing journals by hand or on your computer both are great both are for different people you know i wish i could almost in some ways some some days do sort of like a handwritten journal but then other days i know i'd rather do it on the computer and when i got down to it at the end i feel like i end up doing better stuff on the computer but that's just me so really connections the same i mean we're talking about what else setting can do for us but like hey surroundings affect our characters and kind of what we're going to see today is that surroundings also can affect time and place you know sometimes you have you ever been uh i know i have i have you ever sort of hmm, this is excellent using words well so what i'm trying to say is I think we've all been in one of those situations where we've been super focused on something, reading or whatnot, and you look up and you kind of go, where's the time gone? Now, maybe it's you're playing Fortnite or whatever, but you sort of have that like blurry eyed, oh my goodness, how is this possible? And that's kind of sometimes what we can get out of our setting as well. So big idea today is that writers revision setting to show shifts in time. Apparently they to shows as well. So, Hey, we've got the same example from yesterday and it's actually the one that I added to. So we're continuing to add to the same piece of writing. And as I'm doing this piece of writing and showing it to you, if you want to pause the video, it'd be a great time to pause it and uh, grab the piece of writing be- from before and be ready to add a little part to it. You can organize that however you want to. If you're doing it by hand, you could rewrite the whole thing, but as you're doing it, leave a chunk. Um, and you know, the, ch- so the section that you used before may not work. It may not make sense for you to add something having to do with setting that shows some sort of shift in time. Okay, so here we go. The part in blue you'll see is the part that I added that's new. David's stomach felt empty as he walked slowly out of Mr. Simmons' office. Pausing for a moment, David stared out the window. The days were getting shorter, and already it seemed close to dark outside. How long had he been there? Had he already missed afternoon recess? I know it doesn't quite show it, but those are supposed to be italicized, so those are thoughts of David's. Shadows stretched toward him long and thin. One almost looked like his mother when she was in one of her moods, hands on hip, wagging that finger of hers at him. Okay. Um, and the next next line says, what are my parents going to say? I thought. So I kind of really got into us and into this. And the part I wrote there, it just flowed. I and that kind of, that's how it should be. As you find this part that you want to write, um, or a part of your story that you think you could add to, rather, once you've chosen it, it should be like, I, I know what I'm getting out of this. And as it so happened, when I was reading back through this section to see if I could use it, I immediately was kind of realizing that, you know, when I wrote this before, because it was some really rough writing, The one thing I didn't do a great job of was adding any sort of transition of any kind. And so this was perfect. I could use setting to help show that time has passed, that leaving Mr. Simmons' office, it's not like we just went from one second before to where we're talking in there and it's only lasted a couple minutes. This is not a quick trip to the office. There's a lot of hand wringing and stern talkings and listening that happened. And so when this finishes, I decided that it would be good to really show that 
we'd spent a long time in the office. And as I started to do that, I started to get creative. I started to have fun to where if I was David, which I realized originally when I got this idea, I was. I mean, not David. I was John, but yeah, you get it. So as I'd leave the office, I started to think, what am I noticing that would help me with time? Well, if I look out the window, the time will have changed, and that would be obvious. I could look at a clock, but I mean, then it's so clear how much time has passed. And I would rather have some sort of doubt, some unknown, because David is really in the unknown right now. Now, at the time, <laughs> I'm going to confess, I didn't have those exact thoughts of like, no, don't use the clock. Let's look outside. It's more abstract. But if you're in the mindset of your character, I, I really believe those things work themselves out. So David walks outside of Mr. Simmons' office, and he's going to be going into the hallway. Um, and he looks outside at the window that's there still sort of in the office area and kind of stops, pauses, and is having a moment. Sort of this like crisis of like, what am I doing? How, how long was I in there? What a waste of my time. What? I've gotten myself into the situation for no good reason. And then all of a sudden the shadow reminds him of his mother. And then all, all of a sudden now we transition to that thought of what are my parents going to say? I really try to avoid, even though I did it a little bit in this section, having thoughts back to back to back to back to back. While there is something to it that could feel natural, I don't want to bombard my readers with these thoughts. I don't know that that's totally how most thoughts happen to where, at least for me or my character, I feel like I don't just get lost where I have a string of thoughts. And as a reader, I don't think I'd want to read that. So I thought it would make sense if this tree that's casting a shadow because the day is worn on and it's almost afternoon recess reminds me of his parents. And that's where I'm at. That's it. That's all I got. So your to-do list of things. Reread your story as you're rereading. Be noticing parts that you think uh, there's a time change that's happened. And since we've got multiple scenes, that should be easy. There should be an opportunity for that. So probably towards the uh, beginning of a, of a section, one of your episodes, one of your small moments. Um, I suppose it could happen during it or maybe at the end, but the most likely opportunities towards the beginning to add something. And when you find a spot, you just remember revising. You're revising, adding a little bit more, and it's all through the lens of what setting does for us in changing time. Creating a shift in time creates a transition. So reread, revise, add a little bit. I had a lot of fun with this today. It didn't take me very long. And that's kind of the fun part to me is when I can focus on just this one episode, I'm not even reading the whole story, which I know I told you to do, but I guess if you have a section you already know in your head, like go to it. Now you want to go through your whole story to do this work because there are other spots that probably need it too than just one. But really it's, it's fun to hone in on one section at a time. And you may do that. You may just read one episode, then skip to another. It's your choice. But we're adding shifts in time. And that's it. That was episode 10 or nine and a half, whatever you want to call it. It's not going to bother me. Um, and we, uh, we talked about how setting can do some other extra special things for us. Uh, setting, or you could kind of call it time, time and setting. So uh, I hope that was helpful. I, I felt like it really added a lot of great things to my story. And really think about this as like a cake. Layers. Boy, if all we did was we just made that springy, bouncy cake and then added nothing onto it, I don't know that that would be a cake. I mean, if you watch The Great British Baking Show, I think that I would get knocked out of the first round if I just gave someone a sponge or a cake that had nothing on it or in it or around it. So right now we're doing the work of adding things on top, around the sides, 
maybe adding another whole piece of cake on top. That's what we need to do to make our stories great. Okay, I talked long enough. This was supposed to be a shorter episode, but I think this is fun. I hope you think it's fun too. All right, you guys stay safe and uh, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Peace.